Hello, folks, and welcome to today's video, today's content, which is going to be right in line with the topic of the week. And the topic of the week is dealing with tricky social situations at work, dealing with tricky coworkers and bosses and team members, dealing with workplace politics. And I know that a lot of you are, feel like you need more, more, more help and more skills in dealing with workplace politics. And you're also feeling like workplace politics are keeping you from growing in your tech career. Because look, I absolutely get it. Um, this is something that I've dealt with, that Rob's dealt with, and certainly many, many of the clients who we've helped have dealt with, where the situation, the social situation, the political situation at work is one of the barriers to your growth. Because you may have, you know, for example, a boss who just doesn't seem to get it, that doesn't seem to listen, or that you may not be aligned in values with your boss. You know, you as a leader, you may be a manager or even a director, and you may believe that the main place that you should be spending your time is with the team, mentoring the team, making sure that you're keeping the hiring funnel going, you know, working with HR to do that, making sure that you're supporting and training the team and um, building relationships and inspiring them. Whereas your boss may think, yeah, you need to be spend more, you need to be spending more time coding. You need to be spending more time in the weeds so that you can continue to, you know, up level that technical skill. And so that can be a really tricky situation because in order to grow, in order to get your boss to be an advocate for you, and in order for your boss to say, yeah, this person is adding value, and in order for your boss to give you shining performance reviews, in her mind or in his mind, it's like, yeah, this person needs to be coding and needs to be technically excellent. But if that's not in line with your values, and that's not actually what you want to be doing. This could be a tricky situation to, to navigate. Um, or it may be cases where it's more cultural or it's more about just kind of the climate that's at work. It may not be just one particular person, but it may be a toxic culture that you're working in. Uh, whether it's a culture where people bully each other, where, where there's harassment present, whether it's gender harassment, sexual harassment, or just other kinds of kinds of social social demeaning happens, you know, there it may be a climate where incivility and just outright rudeness is completely accepted, and actually it's celebrated when people are rude to each other and make fun of one another. And this may be keeping you from really feeling like you can grow whether it's because of the stress, whether it's because you can't, you don't really feel like you can relate to people, whether it's because you feel like, yeah, we're winning, but everyone just seems to be diminishing all the wins. And how are we supposed to get recognized for the wins when we're diminishing the wins? There's so many different political, social situations that can happen at work that I know that a lot of you are experiencing on a day to day to day basis. And look, the fact of the matter is, if you can't learn how to navigate these tricky social, these tricky political situations, then there's always going to be this barrier. It's an invisible barrier, but it's a very real barrier. There's always going to be this barrier to your career growth if you can't learn how to do that. So if you just say, Ugh, you know, whatever, workplace politics, I don't want to deal with it tricky social situations, terrible workplace climates and cultures, ugh, whatever, I'm just gonna sit back, do my own thing, be a manager, do the best I can, then that's where you're gonna stay. You're never gonna grow, 
you're never going to make more of an impact. You're never going to really make the contribution that you're truly capable of making. Because the fact of the matter is, these pol workplace politics is real. Tricky social situations are very real. They happen and they're inevitable. They happen all the time because people, <laughs> because people, are, people are at the center. Why does this happen? Because people are complex. I've often said tech is easy, people are hard, right? You know, sometimes you know, we get silly and we say, you know, wouldn't it be nice if all humans were robots and were extremely predictable and we absolutely could program them to act a certain way and we never would have to deal with, with, these, with these workplace politics and social situations. But, but that's actually not what we want because our complex social relationships are the fabric of our being. They're, they're part of the fabric of our lives and they're part of what gives us a sense of purpose and meaning and fulfillment and joy in our lives. Yes, even those, those situations, those social situations that may make you wanna tear your hair out, a lot of times the reason that you're so frustrated it's because you want to connect with people. You want to have those meaningful social relationships. Yes, with the people at work too, but yet it feels like you can't because like you're butting heads because of the culture or the climate or whatever it might be. So there's always going to be the situations and if you can't learn how to deal with them, then it's, it's always gonna stunt your growth. It's, it's gonna be this barrier. And so, Look, there's, there's a lot of complexity that goes into dealing with tricky social, tricky political situations. A lot of it comes down to the details, right? A lot of it comes down to the details of the context. Where are you? Who are you? Who are you working with? What specifically is the situation? What is your desired outcome? What have you tried in the past that has worked, that hasn't worked? These are all questions that we ask our clients when they come to us with these tricky social situations. Um, so if you are currently dealing with one of these tricky situations, I can't give you specific advice and specific strategies around fixing it without knowing the details. I mean, the, the, the devil really is in the details here because context or, contexts are so wildly different. But if I were to sort of pinpoint one theme that is, that is common in all of our answers to whenever we have clients who we know well and we understand their situation, we get all of the details around the situation, when they ask about how do I deal with this political situation, this, so, this tricky social situation at work, the one, the one common theme that is, that is present in every single one of our responses is to have compassion for the other person, for the other people. Now, this doesn't mean to excuse other people for their behaviors, especially when, so, you know, for example, if there's situations where there's harassment going on, where there's bullying going on, just outright, like crossing the line, this is just wrong kinds of behaviors. Having compassion for someone doesn't mean that it's like, oh, it's okay, and you're just excusing their behavior. No, we don't let people get away with this stuff. We Having compassion for someone means calling them out on their behaviors, but doing it in a way that doesn't put them on the defensive. Doing it in a way that doesn't create more drama, because that's the worst thing that could happen, especially if there's already drama happening. You don't want to create more of it. It's really easy to just sort of feed off of the drama 
I just continue to blame and shame and complain. We want to do the opposite of that. We want to have compassion. We want to take a look at what's going on objectively without the drama. And we want to figure out a path forward without blaming anyone, without complaining about, oh, why can't it be better? It's just, here's the path forward. Here's what we're going to do. And what that does require, again, is a compassion, putting yourself, empathy, putting yourself in that other person's shoes and really understanding what that person is going through and why they're doing what they're doing. Again, you're not making them right. You're not saying, oh, it's okay that you're acting like a jerk. I get it. It's fine. You're not saying that. What you're saying is that you appreciate where they are. It's different to say, I appreciate the fact that you think that lashing out and yelling and you know, calling other people, na other people names is a behavior that, you know, I, I get why you might be doing that. I can appreciate it. You're not making them right. You're simply saying, I see this, I hear you, I recognize you as another person. And from a place of compassion, explaining what's going on, explaining what you're gonna explain and figuring out a path forward. Compassion and empathy. The more that you can do that, the better leader you're going to be and the better um, you're going to be able to navigate these tricky social situations and nasty politics. But look, at the end of the day, you probably knew this already, you know, and it's, it's nice to have that reminder, right, of, yep, I, need, I, I want to have empathy, right? I'm going to have empathy. I'm going to put myself into other people's shoes. I definitely encourage you all to do that on a day-to-day -day basis. But at the end of the day, what you need to know, what you want to know is specifically in your situation, given your career outcomes, given your desired outcomes in leadership, given your desired outcomes on a day-to-day -day basis to build and continually uh, create a thriving, high-performing team given your goals for, for upgrading your career, whether it might be going on the job, leaving that situation, right? Because some people are in a situation where it's like, I'm out of here. I just need to sort of cope with this, this, this nasty political situation while I'm still, while I'm still there. Because I can't just leave it's not financially feasible for me to do that. So I need to just sort of figure this out. How do I cope with it while I'm on the job market so that I can move on? But for other people, it's like, I actually really do love where I work. It's just that there's these some situations. It's like, er, I can't figure it out. That's different. It's different. There's lots of different situations. And the fact of the matter is, you want to know how to apply this skill, this compassion, this empathy in your situation with your team. I'm going to take a wild guess that that's why you're listening, that you're taking this overall strategy of compassion and empathy, and you're going to go and you're going to start applying it. But how do I make it stick? How do I make sure that I can continually upgrade the skill? Because I know that it's only going to get harder and harder as I upgrade my career. And I want experts to guide me so that I can always have that support to continually not just have the high level, okay, here's the, here's the high level strategy, which is have more compassion and empathy, but I want a system, I want a proven system that has worked for other technical managers so they can continually upgrade and continually move from one level of leadership to another, to another, to another, and keep it all in context with my goals, my dreams, my values. So if that's what you want, if you want that support, that custom tailored support that you know you need in order to really blast through to the next level of your tech career, then it's time for you to book a call with us, thepeoplestack.com slash book.
we're going to talk about what's going on in your career and at work right now. What's the tricky political climate? Exactly what are the details? And exactly what's going on? Like, what's your day to day like? How frustrating is it? How, how stressful is it? How sad or worried or doubtful do you feel about the future? We're really going to get into that. And we're also going to take a look at where you want to go. What is your outcome? What is your desired career outcome? We're gonna get super specific about that. We're gonna dare you to dream. We're gonna help you to dream. And if we're 100% confident that we can help you get where you wanna go, get you out of the current nasty situation that you're in right now, or even a situation that's about to turn nasty or that you don't wanna turn nasty, to get out of that situation, into a situation where, yeah, I'm thriving, I have the tools, I have the strategies and systems and the support. If we're 100% confident that we can help you get there, then we're gonna tell you, we're gonna show you how. And if you want our help, our expert guidance to get there, then we talk about all the details, including the time commitment and the investment. But either way, no matter what, even if we're not 100% confident we can help you, we're gonna steer you toward resources that are gonna help you. And this is gonna be such a clarifying conversation for you about your career, about what's going on at work. And you're gonna come away from this call with set strategies, with a set system that are custom tailored for you, that are more specific than be compassionate, be empathetic. Although that's a great starting point. You wanna know more. And if you know you wanna know more and you're ready to take a deeper dive and get the specifics on what's keeping you from upgrading your tech career, it's time to book a call, thepeoplestack.com slash book. So that is it for the day, folks. If anything else, the takeaway is it's you have to learn how to navigate workplace politics. If you don't, you are going to stay stuck exactly where you are right now. And one of the keys, the main key that we have found in navigating workplace politics is having more empathy, having more compassion for others. So that's it for now, folks. Take care, and we will talk to you again very, very soon.